Hi there. So, most of you should have got your seeds by now. If you're expecting seeds and you don't have them, then please get in touch ASAP because I've mailed out all the ones that I thought I was going to mail out. I wanted to quickly just go through some basic planting stuff. I know a lot of people have been talking about their zones and how warm it is and when they're getting ready to plant. And I just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page and had the basics of okra planting. I'm actually one slide too far forward. Let me go back to this one. Okra, the people's vegetable. So I always like to, when we're thinking about growing okra, is to remember and to recognize that okra uh, more than likely originated from uh, kind of Ethiopia, East Africa. It's definitely got an origin story from India um, and it's traveled between the two. It's you know, grown and eaten across Africa and came across to North, Central, South America with the slave trade. Uh, but you can see it's, it's pretty much grown all across that central band where it's really hot. So okra likes hot conditions. We can grow it into North America quite successfully. We have some growers way up north that might have to be doing some things different. But um, uh, in, in general, we can treat okra uh, as a heat loving annual. So just to quickly take you through the seed starting, I, I did a germination test on these seeds and got about 75% germination. There's definitely some older seeds in there that might not do well for you. You, you sh I, I gave a fairly generous scoop, teaspoon scoop for everyone. And then some people got larger packets with a tablespoon. So there's a, there's a lot of seed to go out. I, I think you should be able to establish a pretty good stand, but a lot of people like to plant two or three seeds per plug if they're transplanting or direct in the ground to make sure that they get a nice even stand. We'll talk about transplanting and direct seeding in a second. But before we get there, I just wanted to show you this because I think it's pretty uh, illustrative of what okra wants to germinate well. It's got a thick seed coat uh, and will take quite a long time to germinate if you don't give it these warm conditions. So you can see this chart breaks it down that we have germination rate days to emergence under different temperature conditions. And we can see that like we'll get 92% germination rate uh, and 13 days to emerge at 77 Fahrenheit, which is pretty warm. If you step that up to 86 Fahrenheit, you get days to emergence within a week. Um, slightly lower germination rate, but not significant in, in this regard. So basically the warmer it is, the quicker it will germinate. Um, and that will prevent you know rodents eating the seeds in the meantime or them rotting out in the ground if you have wet conditions so nice and warm soil is a big thing especially if you're direct seeding outside make sure the soil has had a chance to warm up and not just the air temperature um, and then the other thing that comes up a lot with uh, germinating okra is all these different tips and tricks on how to improve germination it comes back to this idea that that thick seed coat that you've stored inside needs some chance to kind of break down and it can be hard for the seedling to emerge through that tough seed coat without some additional assistance when i was writing my book on okra so many different people told me so many different tips and tricks that i decided just to do a side by side comparison so that's what i'm showing you here it's just this basic comparison and kind of what we learn is Okra germinates pretty fast if you keep it warm and give it a chance to imbibe enough water to trigger germination. So you don't need to get too caught up in all of this uh, because, you know, the worst case scenario I think on here is like 36 hours and it's still germinating. So that's just a day and a half and it's still starting to sprout. Um, and then a few days later, it would push through the soil. Uh, I, I did find that we did get very fast germination and pretty reliable germination if we go for a, a, an overnight soak, so about eight hours soaked in water. And it's so quick and easy to achieve that, that I generally always do that soaking stage. It just ensures that the, the seed has had a, enough chance to take in all that water and, and trigger germination pretty successfully. So I would advise going for an overnight soak, jar, seeds, tap water on top, and you know leave it overnight, strain them off, and then go ahead and seed the okra straight after that. Uh, I think it just makes sense. I don't, you know, 
don't worry about freezing and bleaching because you just don't need to. You can achieve everything you want to do with just normal water. Uh, so that, that would be my advice. I've also direct seeded okra without any pretreatment and it's been just fine. I would just pay more attention to making sure I'm it's not drying out in that first week where it wants to stay moist for germination if I was going to direct seed without soaking. Okay, big question comes up a lot, transplanting versus direct seeding. Um, I, I want to jump forward and show you this slide quickly because this kind of like prefaces some of the theory behind direct seeding and transplanting. What we're seeing here is root development of an okra seedling. This picture in the bottom left, uh, which is kind of like the, the vertical cross section, is just three weeks after seeding. So three weeks after seeding, we're seeing a 18 inch deep tap root, and then this dense lateral uh, root network that's coming out in a fairly dense mat, again, at about 18 inches all around the okra plant. So that's a lot of root development in that early growth stage. And I think it's really important to realize and maybe respect that when we try and transplant okra. Because if you're gonna transplant into a little plug, however big your, your containers are, it's unlikely your container is going to be as big as that root wants to go if it's given the opportunity to, to continue to expand. And then this picture on the right, which is like the bird's eye view, uh, this is uh, approaching maturity. We're seeing like a four and a half foot tap root. So that's, that's, that's deep, you know. <laughs> and then these are one foot boxes that you're seeing. So we've got two and a half foot on all sides with that lateral root spread. Uh, so again, like it's like kind of five foot diameter all around. So okra unrestricted wants to just really throw out that roots. It speaks to why it's drought tolerant, why it's a good scavenger crop for picking up nutrients. Um, and it's really pretty robust in the field once it's established because of this root network. So if we go back one, it comes back to this question, should we transplant or should we direct seed? It's not as simple as yay or nay in any one direction. Uh, so what we see with transplanting is, and, and the, the, these transplants here are in crazy small containers. So you might like put them in here just to sprout them and then transplant them straight away. Uh, the, the roots definitely going to be shooting down super quickly. <clears throat> but uh, what we see if we transplant is that we definitely get earlier production in our okra. So uh, a good uh, a board member of the Utopian Sea Project, Jamie Swafford, the chef's farmer, he says, you know, if, if you want to guarantee okra by the beginning of July, then you pretty much have to transplant in this region uh, just to get that jump on the season. If you direct seed when the soil is warm enough, by the time it's sprouted and grown and you've given it that kind of like 50 to 60 days to produce fruit, uh, you're going to be into the end of July. Uh, you'll still get a really good okra harvest. You'll still get plenty before that first frost kills it in September, October, but it's going to be slower. So transplanting will get you an earlier harvest. That's significant in this particular trial because I'm asking you to see all your pods, make an assessment of which pods are the palest, and then bag an unopened flower bud to then produce mature seed that takes about 40 days. So don't get too caught up in the numbers, but if you were to add up all those things, then we actually start kind of, you know, we've got a relatively tight window to do this work and make those assessments and save that pure seed before we get first frost, especially if we get a early first frost. And I'm talking Western North Carolina, the further south you go, the more relaxed you can be, the further north you go, the harder this project is going to be for you to be successful. So just keep all those things in mind. And perhaps the further north you go, the more likely you're going to want to transplant to get that jump on the season. So why wouldn't you always transplant? One, transplanting is always a pain. So if you don't have to, uh, I try not to. Uh, it's just extra work, materials, care of the plants. You always get some transplant shock, uh, which kind of can stunt it a little bit. Um, okra tends to deal with that just fine and, and outgrow that shock very quickly, which is why you get the earlier podding, but it's something to bear in mind. The most interesting thing I came across in terms of the comparison was Seed Savers Exchange one year planted like half of their field they did uh, direct seeded and half their field they did transplants just as an experiment. 
they you know verified that yes the transplants get earlier podding but they had a summer storm come through and every single transplanted okra basically fell over uh, it lodged and, and was blown over and every single direct seeded crop did not blow over so that kind of speaks to the testimony that okra really wants to get that early root establishment and that can be severely impacted through transplanting and so all the uh, it's not just plant stability that would also be the uh, the drought tolerance the ability to get you know a good root network for nutrient uptake and all that sort of stuff you're probably going to have better healthier plants with direct seeded um which is worth bearing in mind depending on your soil type and stuff so i i still do both like depending on where i am and what i'm trying to do with my large trials i transplant just because it's more manageable with that many varieties in my home garden i direct seed because it's easier and i think the plants are a little happier so you can do whatever you want um but i would certainly if you're further north push you towards transplanting so that you can hopefully be more successful with this project. Uh, we've already looked at that root development. Uh, the, the other side of this, and no one's actually asked this yet, um, but some people do, can you grow okra in containers? Uh, you can definitely grow okra in containers. It does produce the better, the con bigger the container, the better the harvest. Um, it, it's always a reduced yield. What, what you're seeing here is me trying to grow a dwarf variety in a five gallon container and the roots actually bust through the bottom of the container, one of the drainage holes, and then re-expanded on the other side. You can kind of see the kink in the roots where it did it, and then it welded itself to the ground. I thought I was going to be all clever and move my five-gallon bucket into the greenhouse to get a little bit of season extension, but the whole thing was just like completely, I had to like dig it out, and this was kind of my excavation effort just to show you. So I guess a lot of what I'm saying right now is, they have big exploratory roots and you should respect that and let okra do its thing. Um, so some decisions for you to make in terms of getting these seeds off to a good start, but I, I trust you all to do your best and feel free to reach out to me with like okra specific questions and we'll continue to give some of this educational outreach and support at each of the phases of uh, okra's development. Thank you so much for being part of this project. Check out my okra poster in the background. You can buy one of them from our Utopian Sea Project Etsy shop if you want to continue to support the project and what we're up to, um, even though I fully believe that you're doing enough just by being part of this project. And I'm very excited that you're joining us on this So True Seed sponsored community seed selection project. Thank you all. Bye.